the heck is up you guys it's your boy ace aka animated heroes here back with another action figure review today we're going to be taking a look at none other than the figma good smile company chainsaw man power and i know i am extremely behind on this review i had it combined with another order and that's why it took so long to get here but that's besides the point anyway we have her now so let's go ahead and take a look at it starting off with the sexy packaging Now, first off, I do want to say that this is the bigger packaging that they used to use with some of their older figures. It's not the smaller size like they have been doing lately. As you guys can see, here's a comparison between this and the Figma Nanami. You can see the Nanami box is much smaller. But anyway, moving that to the side. Um, I really love the colors here. You have the pink right here. You got the figure, of course. You got the window, and then the background is almost like a greenish blue color. I really love how these just contrast each other. This is Figma number 589. It says Figma right there, power at the top. We got an image, a uh, bottom image on the side. We got a full body image of her, and uh, I think Meow. I forget how to say it. I always want to say Meowsels because I think of Fortnite, but I don't know. I think it's Meowy, something like that. Y'all comment and tell me. Anyway, we have another image of her and Meowy. And then of course, on the back, we got some poses you can get the figure into, as well as the accessories, and then a bunch of stuff at the bottom that does not matter. Now, anyway, let's go ahead and bust this figure out because y'all know I love Queen Power. So I'm excited to talk about this one. Now, straight out of the packaging, the first thing that I want to say about this figure is I like the way that it looks and I love the way that it feels. As much as I like to joke on Figma, one thing I will never say bad about them is their plastic quality. It always feels A1. It always feels like you're getting your hands on a premium figure. And for nothing else, when it comes to the quality of plastic they use, I got to say it definitely feels like it's worth the price point sometimes. They do get a little ridiculous with certain prices for certain figures, but we're not going to get into that. Now, when it comes to this figure in particular, I got to be honest, man. This one almost makes the SH Fig Yards feel as if it's uh, basically a bootleg. Like, this figure just feels really nice in hand. Now, as much as I've complimented it, I do have to say there are some things that I dislike. Um, now, I want to go ahead and get into one of those right now. I don't know what it is, but it feels like the left leg on mine is a tad bit longer than the right leg, which is why I kind of have her standing with her legs a spread just a little bit because I couldn't really get her to stand up straight. Like, I don't know. She just kept kind of leaning to the right side because that left leg was a little bit longer. I don't know if this is an error, mostly because of the fact that, um, this side right here is kind of hanging out. So maybe they sculpted this leg a little bit shorter. Maybe it's something they didn't even realize. Now, granted, it's not going to be a problem if you get her in any kind of dynamic poses. But when you have her standing vanilla as I have her right now, it is a bit of an issue. Now, hopefully it's just my copy. But when it comes to production on something like this, I don't think so. But anyway, I've rambled on enough. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at her so we can examine some of the details a little bit further. Now, taking an up-close look at this figure again, there are a lot of things I do like about it, but at the same time, there are some things I don't particularly care for, starting off with the head sculpt. Now, first of all, the face plates don't look too bad, but something definitely looks off when you compare it to the anime. Now, that being said, something looked a bit off on the SH figure arts as well, and that's something I said in my video. I think it's just really hard to get her design down in action figure form. Of course, when it comes to the body and everything, that's all fine and dandy, but something about the face might just be a little bit difficult for action figure companies to capture, unless, of course, it's one six scale, then they can put a whole lot more detail into it. Now, the first thing that bugs me, other than the face plates, which are decent, is the hair. I don't like how the bangs that are hanging off to the side are just kind of swaying outward, and you cannot get them to sit flush. Now, granted, this would be okay for uh, fighting and action poses, but it would have been cool if they would have given us an extra accessory where the hair sits flat because this is not going to sit on her chest at all. Like it just is not going to sit. It is always going to be like that. And it's not bad, but at the same time, 
I don't know, man. I just feel like it's a very weird design choice for them to have gone with. They could have easily made it or they could have even attached a peg to it, which granted that would have broken up the look. But as you can see, we have hinges on the back for if you want to get the back of her hair blowing, that's not a problem. But here up front, you can't do that at all. So that's definitely a missed opportunity. Now, another thing they did that was interesting is this right shoulder. Now, if you know Power's design choice, then she always has her jacket kind of hanging off of her shoulder. It's usually right down here around her bicep. It looks like they kind of tried to do it, but then they were like, yeah, no, nah, we're not going to go with that. Obviously, I think it's for articulation purposes, which I'm not going to complain. But if you do compare it to the SHF, you can see SH Fig Yards definitely got it more accurate. And looking at these two figures they uh they couldn't be any more different now i like both of these i want to say that for sure i know i said it but i want to say it again i do like both of these but in terms of how they feel and honestly just the overall look i'm really rocking with the figma right now but granted there is still more review to cover so we'll see what happens but um yeah they didn't get the shoulder right which doesn't bother me i mean again i mean sometimes maybe she does have it up so i'm not gonna say anything about that but the overall rest of the body feels very sleek it feels very well sculpted they do have this ugly slit right here that they continue to go with with certain figures i don't like that um the hair definitely fine i'm okay with that uh they sculpted a, a now on, on her uh, so i really like that also or nagas i think i said it wrong but um yeah yeah we got a little of that and then all the way down to the shoes everything looks good man it, it looks like a solid figure definitely could have used some shading but i don't think figma really does shading at all i would have loved a little bit in the hair and then maybe some in the wrinkles of the jacket but this figure definitely feels nice man i really love how this feels in hand and um hopefully it holds up but anyway let's go ahead and put her back so we can see how tall she stands now, when it comes to her height to the top of her head, as you can see, power is actually almost six inches. Really, she is six inches tall, even taller to the top of her horn. So very, very tall figure for Figma. And I knew when I got it out of the package, it was taller than their average figures. And I wasn't expecting it to be this tall, but I can't wait to do some size comparisons, which of course we will do. Now, unfortunately, I don't have my Figma dingy. I sold it when SH Figure Arts announced theirs, but now I'm kind of mad because I do miss that figure. I know a lot of people didn't particularly care for it, but personally, I enjoyed it and I'm going to be getting it back. But uh, anyway, yeah, very tall figure. Size comparisons coming later. Articulation wise, this figure does have some things I really like. And then there are some things that personally I don't like. First off, the hair is on a hinge. Some of it is anyway. And so this is going to help with those looking up poses. But the only problem is when you do pose her looking up, you're going to see that ugly hinge that is under the neck and it connects it to the head. She looks down very, very well. So that's really good. She is going to get kind of tilt, kind of rocker, not a whole lot. Now, the arms do go up and out about this much i've tried to push it further but unfortunately that's as far as it goes this hoodie is a hard plastic so you're not really going to get the arms to go up any more than that sadly she does it looks like she has a butterfly joint but she doesn't at all it just kind of the hands come in that much and that's all you're going to get and i said hands but i mean arms that's literally all you're going to get out of that and then be careful pushing the uh socket back up in there to hide the gaps now she does have a swivel but it's at it is at the shoulder right here so technically it's not a bicep swivel it's a shoulder swivel single jointed elbows and you can pose them around well enough but you can't really get her hands to touch the back of the head so that's kind of whack and then it does have that ugly gap in there i don't particularly care for uh, i wish they would use a different joint but i mean you do get a swivel in here as well not that it's that important but when you want to hide some of the ugliness you can tuck this piece right here in but it still looks a little weird anyway the hands are on a hinge those move around just fine i really like this you can get the hands to even be expressive now the torso is probably the most interesting part of this figure because 
I'm pretty sure there's a double ball peg in here somewhere. Now she has a diaphragm joint. It's not the most effective. It works, but it's not the best. Uh, she does turn at the waist very well. And I think a lot of that comes from this soft plastic that is here, hiding all of the engineering that is back off in here. But if you wanna get her to crunch forward, I mean to get it to pop off, but um, you can really get her to crunch forward. Not a whole lot, but definitely a decent amount. You can get her to lean back. That's not gonna be a problem and all kinds of rotation in there. Now, when it comes to the legs, this is one of the best parts. She does kick all the way up, but the only problem is you don't wanna hold this pose too long because this plastic right here will definitely get warped. So be wary of that. She does the splits very well. She does have a inner thigh swivel, single jointed knee. Would have been really dope if they had integrated um, a rotation right here, like an extra joint. But knowing Figma, that probably would have messed with this piece because of how small uh, this piece right here is that connects to the knee. So maybe they shouldn't have done that, but it would have been cool. Anyway, foot goes down about that much, up about that much. She does have ankle rocker and that, whoa, that is so much better than I thought. That's cool how they did that. They actually separated the shoe right here where you see this line. I'm assuming that that pegs into here and that's what helps with the rotation. That is really damn good. Smart choice by Figma. I dig that a lot. And then of course she does have a toe hinge. So articulation wise, it's not the best at the arms, but the torso and legs are really good. Sorry about the background noise, but um, yeah, this is, it's definitely decent. Again, not the best, but most things work. Now, when it comes to the accessories, you pretty much get the same things that you get with the SH Figure Arts, except for the fact that the Bandai version comes with more faceplates. Now, first of all, she comes out of the package with a neutral smiling head sculpt and a pair of relaxed hands. Then she comes with two other faceplates, one where she's kind of surprised, and then you have this other one where she is excited. Definitely wish we would have gotten an attacking faceplate or maybe an angry one, a nervous one or something uh, just to switch it up a little bit. But we do get those. We do get two blood swords, which these are really cool. They have a nice shine to them. She does have the blood uh, mallet, which we get right here. And then we do have the blood um, hammer, which this thing is huge as you guys can see and then these pieces right here are actually meant to be connected they don't come connected in the package uh and be careful because this is a very thin plastic and this has a bit of heft to it not a whole lot but um yeah just be careful with this because you don't want this stem piece right here to break because it definitely will uh, now she comes with meowie and uh here he is there's one thing I don't like about this. Uh, the cat looks dope. Uh, I mean, it, there's nothing wrong with it, but a chunk of it's knocked out. And so I guess it's because she's meant to be holding it, but still that's kind of whack right there. That is kind of whack because it means you can only do one thing with this and it's just to have her holding it, which I mean, that's kind of the point because it's in this particular pose and I can't believe I just knocked her over. But um, yeah, anyway, I don't know. I wish they would have given us another cat uh, maybe two so we could get it in two different poses. But um, yeah, this is pretty much all you get. So that's a little whack. And then in terms of the hands, she comes with quite a few. You do get a pair of peace sign hands. You get a pair of like reaching stylish pose hands. You get a pair of weapon holding hands and then you get a pair of fist hands. So accessory wise, she comes with a decent amount. I'm not gonna complain. Could have used more face plates, but when it comes to Figma, I think the standard is three anyway. Getting into some size comparisons, here she is standing next to some of the SH Figure Arts iterations of Chainsaw Man characters. We have her standing next to the SH Figure Arts Chainsaw Man or Dingy, the SH Figure Arts Power. And as you can see, she's much taller than the SH Figure Arts version. And then of course, we also have her standing next to the SH Figure Arts Samurai Sword or Katana Man, whichever you prefer to call him. Next up, here she is standing next to some SH Figure Arts leading ladies. First off, we have the SH Figure Arts Jujutsu Kaisen Greatness. Nobara Kugisaki, the SH Figure Arts Naruto Shippuden Revived Line Sakura Haruno, and then we have her standing next to the SH Figure Arts Hell's Paradise Yuzu Riha. 
Next up here, we have her standing next to the Figma Boku no Hero Academia or My Hero Academia Deku, the Figma Jujutsu Kaisen Greatness Honored One Satoru freaking Gojo. And then, of course, we also have her standing next to a Dawson model Yu Yu Hakusho Yusuke Yurameshi from the Dark Tournament. Lastly, for some random extras, here she is standing next to a Metacom Toy or Mafex Batman Hush Nightwing a Street Fighter Jada Toys Chun-Li, and then a Jax Pacific Supersonic. Now, when it comes to my final thoughts on this figure, I got to say, this is one I am super conflicted on because when it comes to the look of the figure, personally, I really love it. Even more than the SA figure arts, I can say that for sure. Now, the design choices for certain things I don't particularly care for, uh, more specifically the shoulders and certain parts of the abdomen area. I love that she can get some really good range, but I would have been much happier if they would have included a more effective diaphragm joint and then a double ball peg that connects the lower waist to the lower half. Um, I just think that would have been a much better idea. The shoulders uh, definitely need a butterfly joint because you can't really bring her arms in forward much at all, which kind of sucks. I would have loved more arm articulation. And then my issue, my biggest issue is the fact that my left leg is longer than my right leg. Like I tried everything possible thinking that, okay, maybe I need to pull a joint down in the knee or maybe I need to pull the joint out in one of the feet. I tried everything and nothing could fix this problem, which again is why the left leg is more outward than the right. That's my biggest issue with this figure. And I hope it's not an issue that everyone faces, but it is one that I could say uh, be expecting if you plan on getting your hands on this figure. My last issue is the bangs. I really wish they would have included a pair of interchangeable bangs so that you can get that right side of her that's not blowing where it's just kind of sitting on her shoulders. But other than that, solid figure. Definitely a solid figure. It's not perfect. Most Figmas are not perfect in my opinion. They all have some things that are wrong with them. That being said though, this one does a lot of things right. If they could just build off of this and keep going. I'm expecting there to be some issues with Makima and definitely Aki, but I'm hoping that at some point they just give us a, a perfect figure. I really want a perfect Figma because aesthetically they are very pleasing to look at. Most of the time, uh, other than when they use these ugly crotch joints, I enjoy the look of them, especially on Figmas like the Figma Nonomy. It's a beautiful to look at Figma. Now, that's all, but <laughs> you guys get where I'm going. But um, yeah, it's one I definitely recommend for sure if you're interested in it. It's not a bad figure at all. If you got Dingy, you might as well get her. Is it better than the SH Fig Yards? I know that's the question uh, people want to ask. Um, I don't know. Get this video to 150 likes and maybe I'll do a comparison. Uh, it might be a little too late for me to do that. But if you guys want it and there's enough comments and enough love shown, then maybe I'll do it. But overall, it's a decent figure. Uh, hope that you guys enjoyed this review. If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That always helps me out. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure to hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload new content. And last but not least, follow me on everything you see listed in the description below to keep up with my activity outside of YouTube. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe wherever you are and uh, bye.